Very good morning to you. It's uh, such a joy to be with you again, uh, with a tinge of sadness, quite obviously. You know, the last three weeks were so wonderfully happy for all of us, having seen you and being at our premises. And uh, unfortunately, we were forced to close due to the rising numbers in terms of the COVID infections. And uh, we're so concerned about you and uh, we really love you and we want the best for you. Uh, please note that it's not possible to please everybody and to make everybody happy. I know many of you would love to be in church. I'd love to be there also. But we just got to make room and understand that this is the best option right now. With the soaring numbers in terms of infections, we've got to take every precaution to make sure that each one of us is protected. And so God bless you as we back to our online services for a while until the Lord directs us to do otherwise. I know there's so much going on in terms of conspiracy theories. There's so many adverse criticism uh, against the church and religious organizations, but we want to just do what God wants us to do. We want to heed the call of God, and according to the church council, they decided together with myself that we will close for a short while and we will keep you informed. However, we are going to continue with our live streaming and we encourage you to please join us at 9 a.m. every Sunday morning. Let us pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful privilege and opportunity we have of coming before you. Truly, you are mighty and worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. We give you all the honor. For truly, you are such an awesome God. Father, we pray that at this time that you would give us peace there's so much of pain, there's so much of hurt, there's so many people that are being infected by this virus, there's so many other illnesses and challenges that are being faced on a daily basis. We pray your peace upon everybody, Lord. When the angels announced to the shepherds, they said, peace on earth. And we pray that those of us that have accepted you as our Lord and as our Savior will know that peace. Therefore, Lord, we give you all the praises and glory and we ask that you be with us through this time, for we ask it through the beautiful name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Um, I want to speak to you on God's promises. Yes, God's promises. How often we hear people saying, I'll give you a call, but it never happens. Or they say, uh, I'll take your number down and as soon as I get home, I will call you. Never happens. Some people say, I will see you next week. Never happens. Others say, I definitely will be coming to church in the next week. Never happens. You see, we are fallible beings. All of us make those promises, but we cannot keep them. We try to keep them, but we don't. How often you've taken a piece of paper down and written down somebody's address and said, I will visit you. But to this day, you've not visited anybody. You see, we make those promises and we look at ourselves and we think about it and say, I've never kept that promise in, in spite of me having made that commitment. You know, however, with God, it's different. And the Bible says in Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? And shall he not do it? Has he not spoken it? And shall he not make it good? That is a promise that will never be broken. You see, God's promises can never be broken because he is God. The Bible is the inspired word of God. It is a many faceted book. It is a book of history, of poetry, of proverbs, of uh, parables, biographies, and of profound importance. It is a book of mysteries. And so uh, mysteries and because we don't understand everything, but more important than all of that, it is a book of promises because God's promises are yea and amen. He said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you, even unto the end of the age. And no matter what your challenge is right now, I want to say to you, God will never leave you, neither will he forsake you, even unto the end of the age. There's a writer called Russell Kelso Carter. He was born in 1849. And uh, he was a very, very intelligent man. Academically, he was outstanding. He was also a star athlete in the military. He was a Methodist minister and also a musician. And so he wrote a number of songs. However, at the age of 30, he became terminally ill, critically ill with a heart condition. And he wrote one of the most enduring hymns of the 20th century standing on the promises of God. I said to you, he was a musician and he decided that no matter what happens in his life with his heart, <clears throat> God's word became so alive to him, more alive than ever before. He began to study the scriptures. He began to read more. And this is what he said. And I quote, Lord, whether you see fit to heal me or not from now on, my life is fully yours and I'm going to stand on your promises. He wrote that wonderful hymn, Standing on the Promises of God, my Savior. God always doesn't see it fit to heal our illnesses. Sometimes he takes his children home to heaven where they experience perfect eternal bliss. At other times he chooses to heal us here on earth. At other times, we're not healed and we don't understand why. But you know what? Like Russell Kelso Carter, whether we are healed or not, we must just dwell in the perfect will of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Carter should have died at the age of 30, but God gave him another 49 years to live and he lived to the ripe old age of 79, standing on the promises of God. You know, the nature of God's promises are sometimes conditional and sometimes unconditional. You know, when you look at an unconditional promise, it is this, unconditional. And I will establish my covenant with you, God says. Neither shall all flesh be cut off any more by the waters of a flood. That was after the flood, Noah's flood. Neither shall there any more be a flood to destroy the earth. That's an unconditional promise. This is a conditional promise. Second Chronicles 7.14 If 
You see, that becomes conditional. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. That is a conditional promise because it comes with the word if, if my people. So there's conditional promises and unconditional promises. Then there are future promises. Isaiah 2, 4, And he shall judge among the nations still to come, and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. That's future. Here's a promise that's fulfilled. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Hasn't that been fulfilled? That promise is fulfilled already. So it's done, Timothy 3.1. Just know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. And now we can honestly say that this has happened. We are in perilous times. Wherever did you hear of nations being shut down, of kingdoms being shut down due to a virus. And what is going on right now is unprecedented. We do not understand what is going on. However, one thing we know that Jesus warned us about perilous times and we are in perilous times. God also gives promises to individuals. In Genesis 12 too, he said, and I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. You know what my intention today is by um, is, is uh, in ministering this message to you is to dwell on the promises of God. Everything else is fleeting, but the promises of God are constant. You got nothing else to hold on to, neither have I. The only thing we have is to hold on to our God. Where are all the Christmas parties? Where are the end of year parties? Where are the wonderful celebrations that we had, the shopping sprees, the trips to the beach, the trip to, trips to the malls, sitting at restaurants and eating, our services at churches where we buy our Christmas clothes, wait the whole year and save money to buy our groceries and food stuff for Christmas and get ready for that glorious day. Where is it all gone? It's all gone due to this virus. However, there's one constant. Jesus said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you. And his words ring so true amidst all the chaos that we are encountering right now. I will never leave you. Can, can you understand the enormity of those words? I will never. You know, in the Greek, it's a double negative. In the English language, it doesn't do justice to the original Greek. In the original Greek, it is, I will never never leave you, neither will I forsake you, even unto the end of the age. That's a promise that God gives to you and I. God's promises are 100% reliable, not like you and I. I mean, I'm guilty of it. I give people our phones and say, put down your number, and they put down your number. I'll call you. We never get down to doing it. But God's promises are 100% reliable. As anybody of, uh, ha, does anyone have a track record like that? None of us. Only God. Titus 1-2 makes reference to eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. Before the world began he promised because God cannot lie. He cannot lie. Hebrews 6-18 says that it was impossible for God to lie. Whenever God speaks at any time on any subject, you can write it down as absolute truth. God also never forgets. If my people were called by my name, he will never forget. It's a conditional promise, but he would never forget. You know what? He says, I will bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. It's a promise. He says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Every tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn. This is your heritage as servants of the Most High God. It's a promise and he's not going to take away that promise. Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I will repay. That's a promise. He's not going to take it away. I want you to be assured today 
that you are in the perfect will of God Almighty. God never forgets. The psalmist says, For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham his servant, and he brought forth his people with joy, and his chosen with gladness. Psalm 105, verses 42 to 43. Because you always promise, because God always promises, he will always deliver. You know, um, there's the story that he said about uh, by Dr. Lynn Jones of a young boy that went up to Santa Claus and asked, uh, asked uh, Santa Claus, are you a politician? And Santa Claus said to him, but why do you want to know? He said, you are just like the politicians. You always promise, but you never deliver. You know, our God is not like that. And uh, I know some of you are not laughing at that dry joke. I understand that. But you know what? The point is this. God is a God who will never, never leave you. Neither will he forsake you. God is not subject to any of man's weaknesses or limitations. Jeremiah 32, 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out your arm and there is nothing too hard for thee. In Luke 137, the angel said to Mary, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Whatever God says, you can count on it with absolute certainty. You know, when, when, when Jesus says in John 14, 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I will come again. That's a promise. If your heart is troubled, I will come again. That where I am, there you may be also. It's a promise. God's not about to break his promise. You know, we were so excited to be in church for the past three weeks. I was just so overcome with emotion to be back in that place, in the house of God. Little did I think three weeks later, we're going to shut the doors again. However, the physical building may be shut, shut, but remember that the church remains open in our hearts. The temple, we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. We, yes, corporate worship is so important and vital to our being. But remember, in the absence of that, this is the church. This is what we need to do. Hold on, cling to the promises of God. Then there are warning promises. Psalm 917, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. There are saving promises. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. There are motivating promises. 2 Corinthians 7, 1, having therefore these promises dearly beloved, let us Cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. We have comforting promises. He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Today we lay to rest my dear uncle, the last surviving uncle on my paternal and maternal sides of the family. And uh, it is not possible to even, even have a service in the church like we would have loved to, or even at the grave, and everyone struggling with broken hearts there, everyone's crying, my cousins are all upset today, but you know, the verse being so true, we heal at the broken in heart, and bind it up their wounds. God will do that for all those that are struggling right now. I know of a pastor's son who's 29 years of age, who is on life support right now, and I know their parents are crying for their son. There's so many people that we know that are afflicted, but God promised. He says he healeth the broken heart and bindeth up their wounds. What else have we got to cling to? What other promise have we got to cling to? But the word of God, 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. The eternal God is thy refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Psalm 8, 7, the Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. 
Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. We have promises that are full of hope. He gives us hope. Psalm 27 verse 13. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. One of the most beautiful hymns and one of my favorite hymns is the one that comes from Lamentations chapter 3 verses 21 to 24. This I recall to mind. Therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. I love that hymn. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Yes, thy compassions, they fail not. Great is thy faithfulness. Summer, winter, springtime, harvest. Great is thy faithfulness. No matter what your challenges are going, your uh, challenge you are going through right now, I want you to know that God's faithfulness is great. He doesn't know how to lie. He cannot lie. He will not lie. He's not like you and I. He will keep his promises. When he said, I will never leave you, neither will I forsake you, he will keep that promise. When he said he will heal the broken heart and bind up our wounds, he means that. He really means that. He's not going to go back on his promises. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. What is the glorious hope? Jesus is coming again. He's coming to receive you and I as his, um, as our, uh, our master and our king and as his bride. We're going to be with him shortly. Just endure for a little while. Revelation 21, 4, And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. These words are true and faithful. Second Corinthians one twenty. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. God's promises are yea and amen. Lord, sometimes we have to be patient. Sometimes we do not understand like how the psalmist cried in Psalm 94 verse 3, Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? How long? Are you going to let that happen? Oh, Habakkuk 1, 2. Oh Lord, how long shall I cry? And thou will not hear. Acts 7, 17. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. It happened many, many, many years later. However, it did happen. 2 Peter 3, 3. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Remember, those are scoffers. You and I must believe the promise of God. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. But he's long-suffering to us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know, I gave you a short um, story of Russell Kelso Crow, who had this terrible heart condition, and he lived to the ripe old age of 79. At age 30, he was critically ill. Dr. Lynn Jones tells, tells a story of a pastor called Charles Allen. He was a pastor of the first United Methodist Church in the United States of America, Houston, Texas. He spoke once on the promises of God. And the following week, he got a letter from a young man who had ser served in the Vietnam War. And so this pastor preached on the promises of God. And the following week, he got a letter 
from a young soldier that served in the Vietnam War. The young soldier had tuned into the service the previous Sunday, and this is what he wrote to Dr. Allen in expressing his appreciation for that service. This is what he wrote. You sang the hymn, Standing on the Promises. I loved that hymn. During the war in Vietnam, I stepped on a mine and lost both my legs. Now the promises of God are the only things that I can stand on. You see that young soldier understood the dynamics of standing on the promises of God. If you want to stand on the promises of God with your physical legs, with your physical ability, with your natural giftings, you're not going to be able to do it. But if you are willing without legs to say, I stand on the promises of God like that soldier who lost both legs in the Vietnam War, then I promise you, you are going to be happy. I want you to stand on the promises of God. Let's not be like the world that has no hope. Let's not be like people that just scream out negativity. I want you to take every precaution right now. I want you to do what God wants us to do. I do not understand the wearing of masks. I do not understand sanitizing. However, I would rather do that than not do that because the unknown is the unknown. If we do what God wants us to do and we observe what is uh, asked of us to do, we will be safe, hopefully, but there's nothing safer than being in the arms of an almighty king. To stay in the arms of Jesus, I want to leave you with this hymn. And I couldn't play it because of copyright. However, I want to read it to you. It says, standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing, standing on the promises of God. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Saviour. Standing, standing, standing on the promises of God. Standing on the promises that cannot fail when the howling storms of doubt and fear assail by the living word of God, I shall prevail. Standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I now can see, perfect present cleansing in the blood for me, standing in the liberty where Christ makes free, standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises of Christ the Lord, Bound to him eternally by love's strong cord, overcoming daily with the spirit sword, standing on the promises of God, standing on the promises I cannot fail, listening every moment to the spirit's call, resting in my Saviour as my all in all, standing on the promises of God. I want to leave you with the verse from Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Living Waters Church, and all of those that have come under the sound of my voice, I want to just say to you this morning, God bless you. Cynthia and I love you very dearly. We wish you well. Don't forget to continue to bless the church with your tithes and love offerings. That's the only way we're going to survive this lockdown and this time that we are, we, are, we are away. Let it be your obligation to God. You know, in 1906, William Seymour, all he had was a plaque on his wall that said, settle with God. And I like to say the same with you, settle with God. I'm not asking you for money. I'm saying settle with God so that our church could continue to function at this time. And thank you for your tithes and thank you for your love offering. Thank you for blessing the church. God be with you and God bless you. From the leadership of our church, we express our gratitude, our love to you. And we're not going to apologize for closing our doors. We want the best for you. We will not accept anyone being infected with the virus due to the negligence of Living Waters Church. We'd like to thank our task team, the doctors, the nurses, the health professionals that have been such an awesome team 
assisting us. God bless you and God be with you. This is Pastor Christian Kiston from Living Waters Church in Durban North. I'm going to pray with you and pronounce a benediction. Father, we thank you for this wonderful time that we've had together. We thank you that you promised us that you would never leave us, neither will you forsake us. I commit our people unto you and all those that have come under the sound of my voice, that you would bless them, Lord, that you would have your angels watch over them. I ask for protection from this terrible pandemic. All those, Lord, that are sick in hospitals, that are being, being infected with this virus, I pray for healing. I pray for deliverance, Lord. I pray that you would, Lord, perform a miracle. All those that are in hospital for any other reason, any other ailment, I pray for healing. I pray for those that are down right now. I pray for those that are hurting, those that are in pain, those that are emotionally scarred, those that do not even know which way to turn for finances. Lord, come through for them. Father, we're tired of this world. We're tired of the struggles and the pain of this world. We look forward to the time when you said in your word that God himself will wipe away every tear from our eyes and we can pretend and we can say, but we have Jesus. But even having Jesus with our physical bodies, with our physical minds, it is so difficult to live this day. But we thank you that we have you that helps us live this day, that take us, takes us through the valley of the shadow of death. I ask you, Jesus, hold our hands and take us on. Lead us, Lord. Lead us on. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead us on through this difficult time. I pray that you would give us hope. Let the church of Jesus Christ, the world over, have the hope that you promised to each one of us. And I pray God that you would bless us. Father, I remember the many families that do not even have money to do Christmas shopping right now. Whilst there are many that could buy clothing and gifts, there are those that will not be able to even afford food. I pray for peace, God. I pray for comfort. I pray for provision that you would reach out, Lord, and help us all as mankind to understand each other and to stand with each other, not to flout our financial blessings all over on media, but to understand that there are those in pain, that there are those that are struggling, that there are those that do not wish to live another day. I pray for strength for them, Lord. I pray for those that are depressed right now. I pray, God, that you would give them the peace that passes all human understanding. Lord Jesus, it's come to a time when we are in the sea of hopelessness, except for you that throws out a lifeline. And we just love you this morning. We give you the praises, the glory, the honor, and the worship. And ask all of this through the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Shalom and God bless you. To Janelle and Clinton who were married yesterday, I'd also like to express our congratulations to Galvin Roberts on celebrating his birthday and to Alan Tobin that celebrated yesterday and to all those that have celebrated their birthdays. God bless you. God be with you. And uh, goodbye until we meet again. Chains are broken, cause you have spoken. It is finished on the cross. Now I'm living in your